after that. So welcome everyone. Can you confirm in the chat that you see my screen, please? Like type pluses in the chat. Santia confirmed, confirmed. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. So let me take you in a small journey about the convention of biological diversity with the capacity building of the environmental law of the working group uh, in the UNMJCY. That and thanks for Cynthia and uh, and thanks for the uh, for the organizers. So let's go to the introduction. Okay, so in this actually an introduction, we're gonna be talking about uh, three things. First, the history and also the timeline objectives. And how the uh, and how the convention uh, biological uh, diversity promote the nature and uh, the human well-being. First, uh, let's go into the history. So the history uh, about the convention is an international treaty that was open for signature at the United Nations Conference of Environment and Development in Rio, Brazil. At uh, 1992, the CBD entered into the force at the uh, 29 December at the 1993, and has since been uh, uh, and uh, since been uh, ratified by uh, 196 parties, making it one of the most widely ratified international environmental uh, agreements. The CBD aims uh, to conserve the biological the diversity, uh, promote the sustainable use uh, of its components, and ensure the fair and uh, the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits raising from the use of genetic resources. Uh, to recognize uh, and rinsing value of the biodiversity and and the critical role it uh, it plays uh, sustaining life on earth and uh, since uh, uh, and since its inception the cbd has played a scientific role in shaping the global biodiversity policy and has uh, catalyzed the, uh, the development of a number of important in initiatives, including uh, uh, NEGAYA uh, protocol on access and benefits sharing, uh, the global strategy for planet conservation, and the program of work on protected area, also, uh, also the CBD is connected with the other international environmental agreement, which is such as the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNFCCC, and the United Nations of Convention of Compact uh, 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 Desertification. And if you see here in the timeline that first of all, into the 1992 in June, they opened for the signature and then enforce it at the 1993. And then we have the first cup at November at the 1994. Then we goes into the cup four at the 1998. Then we have uh, the global uh, taxonomy initiative at actually the cup four. Then we go into the uh, Cartain, uh, uh, sorry, Cartanesia uh, protocol enters into the force at uh, 2003. And then into the 2010, we have the COP10, which is making the strategy plan for the biodiversity uh, from 2011 into the uh, 2020, and also Aisha. Uh, 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 Aishi targets, and I will be explaining that later. And then into the 2014, we have the uh, uh, 
Negoya, a protocol enter into the force. And then into the uh, 2016, we have the Cub 13 in Mexico, and then into the Cub uh, 14 and the 2018 uh, here in Egypt in Sharm el Sheikh. And then we go into the, unfortunately, the 2020, which is happening with the pandemic of the COVID-19. Then we hold, and, and then we hail the first Cub uh, 15 part one, and it was in China, and it was uh, virtual due to the COVID-19 restrictions. And then into the uh, December, uh, into the last year at the COP15 part two, which is happening in Canada to, uh, to adopt and to discuss about the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. So this is simply the history and also the timeline of the CBD. So we're gonna be going into the, right now, uh, into the objectives. So the objectives, they having three main objectives. First, that having the conservation of biological diversity. Second, having the sustainable use of its components there we have the the fair and equitable sharing of the benefit arising from the use of genetic resources to achieve these objectives the cbd has established a number of the provisions including the, the including the development national biodiversity uh, strategies and and action plans to establish the protected areas and to regulation of access to genetic resources. So the, the second part, uh, I mean the third part of the introduction, how the convention of biological diversity will be promoting the nature and the human well-being. So, so the convention is promoting for the many aspects, uh, such as the web of life, changing the world, calling for action, the national level, that focusing into the national level and focusing in, in, into the international level. And also the next steps after the decade, uh, the UN decade of the convention. Then we're gonna be moving into the strategic plan. So into the strategic plan for the biodiversity from 2011 into the uh, 2020, the most recent strategic plan for the convention and at this period. So in this actually plan, we just identify five strategic goals and known as Aishi targets, uh, which were agreed upon into the parties uh, of the convention. Aishi targets uh, are addressing the, are focusing into the first one, addressing the, underli uh, ad uh, ad uh, addressing the underlying causes of the biodiversity loss uh, by mainstorming biodiversity across the government and uh, society. Uh, reducing the uh, uh, reducing the direct pressures on biodiversity and promote the sustainable use, approve uh, the status of uh, biodiversity by safeguarding ecosystem species and uh, genetic uh, biodiversity, enhancing the benefits to all from biodiversity and ecosystem services, enhancing. Uh, implementation through uh, particularly planning and uh, knowledge and management and the capacity building. These are the main strategic plans of Ayashi targets. Then we go into the decision of the X slash two, X slash 10. So in X slash two, that happened into the uh, 10th meeting of the conference of party, the COP. He, uh, uh, which is healed from 18 into the 22 October uh, at uh, uh, in Niago. Uh, uh, no, 
in Nagoya and Ayashi uh, a brief and Ayashi a brief picture uh, Japan adapted uh, a revised and updated uh, a strategic plan for the biodiversity, including Ayashi biodiversity targets for for the 2011 and 2020 period, and this actually plan provided over uh, uh, overarching framework on biodiversity, not only for the biodiversity uh, uh, related conventions, but also into the entire of the United Nations system and also into the parties and having engaging in the biodiversity management and policy development. Also, the parties agreed to translate the international framework into the uh, uh, revised and updated into the national biodiversity strategy and action plan within two years. Addition, plus we have the decision of X slash 10, the, uh, the conference of party decided that should focus into the implementation in, uh, of the strategic plan that uh, uh, that I talked about, and also the progress achievement towards into the Ayashi uh, biodiversity targets, and and here in the link you uh, and here in the link you will find the whole decisions of the all cups and also the whole decisions that happens. Uh, uh, during this period. And let's talk about the post-2020 framework. So so right now we are into the 2023. So what? So right now the convention and also the strategic plan, it's supposed to be ended. So did we reach into the, our target? Uh, so this is the talk and negotiating about the 2020. What happens during this actually strategy? Did we implement it? Uh, did we success or not? So I'm gonna be leaving you into the short video right now, and then we will continue into the post 2020 biodiversity framework. Uh, so right now we have the framework as seen as critical step towards. So what happening that we didn't achieve our strategy plan into the 20, uh, 22, uh, uh, into the 2020. So we at actually the COP15, they are signing into the post-2020 biodiversity framework for the next 10 years and then in the same uh, so in the same discussion and also in the same uh, negotiating at the cup 15 they see that actually the framework is uh, is seen as a critical step toward to achievement of 20 2015 uh, vision of the cbd which by the 2015 biodiversity is value uh, is uh, uh, is a valid uh, no it's it's valued it's uh, valued and conserve it and restore it and uh, wisely used maintaining the ecosystem services and sustaining a healthy planet and de delivering the uh, uh, the benefits essential for all people. It, it is expected to guide a national and international efforts to do uh, to towards the biodiversity uh, uh, conservation and uh, sustainable development over the next decade. So right now, let's go into the COP15. So what happens into the last COP last year? So this is are the main outcomes. First of all, ad adoption of the uh, of the accumulating uh, discoloration, uh, which uh, re uh, reaffirming the commitments of the parties. 
to the CBD and calling for the urgent action to address the current crisis of the biodiversity loss. Second, adoption of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, which setting out sharing the vision, the mission, and setting the goals and targets for, for the convention and sustainable use of the biodiversity through, uh, through to the 2030. Also, uh, also, they are agreed to setting the target under the framework, which is include uh, conserve at least a 30% of the land and sea by the 2030, target to reduce the rate of the introduction and establishment of invasive aligned uh, species by at least 50%. Fourth, adoption a new protocol to access the benefit sharing under the CBD, which is aimed to ensure that that the benefits raising from uh, from the use uh, like from the use of genetic resources are shared uh, are shared uh, freely. And the fifth part, they agree to having the new funding a me a mechanism for the biodiversity, which is called as a global biodiversity fund it's like the same what what was happening into the cab 27 which is uh, the loss and damage fund uh, the sixth part which is measuring to address uh, the the divers of the biodiversity loss including the unsustainable use of the natural resources habitat the described uh, habitat uh, destruction pollution and climate change so this is our the main outcomes and and the main decision and the summary of the decision of the outcomes of the cop 15 and by the end we having the most amazing leader at actually the unip which is anger anderson the executive director of the unip and she was saying that about I am taking from the quote an ambitious and mergeable post of the 2020 biodiversity framework, which drivers our action to end the biodiversity loss, is important. Uh, ensure a policy to secure the future for people and planet. We at UNIP are unwavering in our commitment to support the member state and the CBD to arrive at a framework that letters our uh, relationship with the nature world for the future. And by the end, let's fix it. Thank you, gracias, danke, shukran, uh, to, uh, and to Daraba.